Uh, so hello everyone. Uh, I hope that you're doing good. So today we will talk about uh, my IRM poster, which is titled Take and Learn it to the Next Level, a study of educational video games. So for the abstract of this project, it goes as follows. Uh, so the goal of this research project is to investigate and identify the qualities and elements of video games with the key components. This enables the students or the player to efficiently and uh, effectively learn or reinforce new concepts without losing their interest and attention. Uh, so this is mainly to say that this project aims to find what, what makes educational video games uh, efficient and, uh, and deliver a clear message, deliver concepts to, to the students or the player. So for the background, just to summarize, so it so we know that uh, video games are developed each year, each with its own objectives, genre, uh, methods, uh, qualities. But we, today we will start, we'll focus just on the educational video games. So there are many examples of video games that uh, that educational. There, there's many examples of educational video games that fail to 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 deliver a message to the player. Let's. For example, uh, and a student that is uh, struggling with some uh, mathematics uh, courses. So let's say that there is a video game that is designed to help him with this problem. So he just tries it, and uh, and and he he doesn't find it very very compelling or very efficient. So due to, to many reasons, such as the poor design of, of the interface, so which makes uh, makes him lose focus all the time. Uh, in addition to, to, for example, the, the sounds or the noises that the game makes, which may be a little too, too, too uncomfortable for him. And uh, so this highlights uh, this highlights the need for further study to determine which techniques and features in educational video games that are most important that are most efficient and important when it comes to to providing a positive learning experience. This this uh, takes us to the next point, which is the problem. So the problem in this case is the components and the traits of uh, successful video games with, with educational features are still up for debate or, and are not clear at all. So as well as how each one of uh, is what each one of these uh, features contributes to, to the to, to the general uh, players engaging experience. So for the research question that I came up with, it goes as follows. Uh, what are the characteristics of video games that have educational components that lead to an effective uh, knowledge gathering and uh, encourage the, the acquisition of knowledge? So as, to, as an answer to that, I came up with the following hypothesis. So I hypothesized that the main characteristic of effective knowledge gathering and educational video games are going to be having a meaningful challenges, a clear learning objectives, and a safe environment for experimentation. Uh, additionally, this type of video games should also give players instant feedback and a sense of uh, progress and achievement. Also, there should be many opportunities for practice and reflection. Uh, and it is also important to know that the challenges should not, should, should not be too difficult, as this can help maintain the player motivation and uh, for him to not give up on uh, learning. Uh, so moving on to the disciplines, so I, I, I decided to go with the uh, with the game design as a leading discipline. So the game design focuses on uh, the process of creating video games and it involves a wide range of uh, sub disciplines such as art, animation, programming and many more. But I will focus on the sub discipline of level design. Since uh, game this since game level design involves uh, designing the, the the individual levels or stages of a video game, including the challenges, the objectives, and the rewards, uh, so it also shapes the player's experience of the game and can make a great difference between a game is engaging and effective, and one that is frustrating and uh, very tedious. And moving on now to the second discipline, which is uh, 
the cognitive uh, psychology. So cognitive psychology is a subdiscipline within psychology that focuses on the study of mental processes such as perception, attention, memory, and many more. So uh, cognitive psychology is also concerned with how people uh, with how people acquire store retrieve and use information to make decisions solve problems and interact with their environment which which shows that this this discipline is very essential and going to help me greatly to know exactly which characteristics and techniques of uh, an education video game that are more efficient in transmitting the the right message and uh, help the player understand and uh, use uh, the information correctly for the methodologies, I used a bunch of quantitative, quantitative and qualitative research methods. So, for example, um, for the cause methods, let's go with the experimental studies. So, for this, uh, for this technique, I will be, I will be using it to compare the effectiveness of educational video games with and without some obvious learning characteristics such as uh, setting a learning objective for the player. So uh, by manipulating the presence and absence of different characteristics in a controlled environment, we can actually demonstrate the importance and the benefits of our research in knowing and controlling the right characteristics of education video games in learning uh, objectives. And uh, for the solution methods, for the sake of time, uh, I'll I'll cover only the eye tracking studies. So these studies can be used to examine how players interact with the uh, educational video games. So this can provide an insight into which characteristics are more uh, effective in capturing player attention and uh, promoting learning. Uh, I will go briefly off over the other ones. So there is the content analysis. So this this mainly consists of analysis of uh, the components of uh, of uh, of some famous uh, video games and uh, comparing them. Uh, and for the interviews and surveys, uh, I will be in, in conclude. The, conducting some interviews and research with re, and interviews and surveys with some professors, game designers, and uh, and uh, students. I will where I will be asking the following questions: uh, Did you ever play a, an educational video game? What did you learn? How did you find it? Uh, are there any suggestions that uh, you would like to try? Uh, and uh, that's the main theme of the technique. And finally, there is the cor correlational studies where I was using them to examine the, the relationship between the presence of certain characteristics in video games and uh, their, learn their learning outcome behind uh, uh, the le their learning outcomes after after using these games. Uh, so we, as you can see here is a small uh, example of what the results are going to be. So for example, for this eye tracking study, we will uh, we will go, we will uh, have this eye tracking chart which has uh, the percentage of people who were looking actually at the faces the percentage of people who were looking at the environment of the video game uh, the percentage of people who 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 did, who were looking at the models meaning the the bodies of the of the characters in the video games and uh, the percentage of people who were not actually looking at all uh, so here is another example, which is a table presenting the percentage percentage of players who kept playing for 30 minutes before and ad, and after the addition of certain features, such as the, the, a goal, a clear goal and objective, hence better graphics. And here are some percentages to compare. And uh, moving on now to the expected results, I expect the main features of the, these uh, efficient video games with education c components that's going to be uh, meaningful challenges. That's that's to keep the players and engage a clear to make sure that the player stays focused and does not get lost throughout the learning process. Uh, a safe env uh, environment for experimentation, which to which is to to give the player a sense of control and let him experiment with new and acquired then his new acquired concepts. Uh, the instant feedback to give the player a way to correct himself and learn from her, from his uh, mistakes, 
uh, a sense of achievements or progress. So there are some people that take pride in, in achievements. So that's what we're going to use uh, to make them uh, focused on playing. And uh, finally, the ability to change difficulty. So the, we know that the people have different intellectual abilities, so to not discourage them and uh, and make the, the game a little bit uh, acceptable for them, uh, we will be able to change the difficulty. Uh, and finally, for the conclusion, so thanks to this research, we went through a bunch of techniques that can improve or hinder education of video games. Uh, and we were able to find which ones are optimal, and thus we will be able to to design better learning uh, video games for different uh, purposes and disciplines. But that's not all. There are many other challenges that we need to 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 discuss and to investigate, such as the accessibility of a video game. So as we know, video games are not uh, available for everyone. Uh, due to some uh, restrictions, so how can we go about this problem? And there's additionally the acquisition price. So some some video games are actually not free. So how how can we make uh, how how can we uh, find a right price for this uh, educational video games? And there are the references, the contacts, and uh, thank you for your attention.